as far as I'm aware, I, I wasn't aware that he had direct involvement with Zafran. I, I was aware of that, that work that he did. In terms of his direct involvement with Zafran, <coughs> I, I, can't, I can't really give you a, a good answer as to why uh, Azad Mulana was, would be uh, the conduit for that meeting, frankly. Um, I, I don't have any evidence of the fact that the Zafran and Sa Sally met prior to that at all. I mean, Zafran was not active for, during the 80s. He's, he's, he's around my age, so he would have been much younger then, of course. So uh, he wouldn't have had direct involvement with Sally during those years. NGJ, from what I understand, again, I will defer to people who know Sri Lanka much better than me, much more active later on in the early 2010s. So I, I don't think Sally would have necessarily had that, that bond then. Well, that was the uh, producer and the filmmaker of the Colombo Liberals groundbreaking documentary on the Easter Sunday Massacre. And what happened there was the makers of this fictitious piece of lousy journalism admitting that their key piece of accusation in the whole 47-minute documentary has no credible evidence. Tonight, I don't want to talk about them. After all, they did have the humility and the sincerity to accept that they came up short. I commend them for that. We are not perfect humans, after all. Now, the Cardinal also did say, don't worry, ask for forgiveness. We are ready to forgive. If you have made an error, just own up and we will forgive. There you go. The makers of the documentary confessed. Now, the Cardinal can keep true to his Christian word and forgive them. And let us also do the same right now. But tonight, what I want to focus is on the Colombo liberal idiot class and their swift move to believe whatever the bull that was dished out by these Western dookie holes. When this documentary came out, certain so-called respectable, I mean, honestly, they're just fake, untalented journalists who are practically married to American intelligence and along with their so-called human rights jokers who couldn't give two hoots about the rights of Sri Lankans but only cater to their interest groups. And of course, the LTTE-loving diaspora-pumped individuals who claim to be rights activists. Now, all of them, without taking a millisecond to check, verify, or at least ask a couple of questions, jumped on the bandwagon to mislead their ill-informed followers just to stir hate. They hide behind this term, accountability. But as you can see, it later became a bunch of bull. I mean, accountability is an excellent concept. Shall we start with these idiots who ran with the Channel 4 bull to stir hate? Now, if you take a moment and check their socials, you will see this fact. All what they have to offer is hate. Hate for the country, hate for our leaders, hate for our military, hate for the whole idea of being a Sri Lankan. Hate, 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 hate. Perhaps this entire experience would have opened the eyes of some in this country who wants a better life for their children and future generations. I hope they actually would take steps to get away from the hate and embrace the love that this nation so desperately needs. We need to start loving our country. We need to start loving the idea of a better nation, better leaders, better systems, better quality of life, better opportunities, better lifestyles and a better world for each and every one of us. We need not just love such an idea, but we also need to start putting them into action. As long as you follow those fake thought leaders, all you get in the end is the hate they teach you. And then you continue to be a slave to whatever they worship. Sri Lanka needs a new direction. And which direction is that? We all should get together and decide. We'll be right back.